Hello, I'm Eric Marola, the director of the upcoming documentary, Ukraine, Fetal Stem Cell Pioneers, coming in April of 2023. If you haven't yet watched the 37 minute preview I released a few weeks ago, click on the link in the description below. Or if you have any questions, shoot me an email. I love answering emails about this technology. I had planned on releasing this documentary earlier in 2022, but as we know, Russia happened. Nevertheless, nine Americans, including me and my wife, undertook the journey from the United States to Kyiv, Ukraine. Here is our story. On September 16th, 2022, my wife and I packed our bags and camera equipment and flew 11 hours from Los Angeles to Warsaw, Poland, then grabbed a 30-minute taxi to Warsaw's International Train Station, where we met up with Julie, Diana, Zanzella, Sophia, and Adonis. Some have asked, why are you traveling all the way to Ukraine to receive stem cell therapy? The reason? Because you simply cannot get fetal stem cell therapy anywhere else on Earth. And for people like Sophia and Adonis, their very lives depend on it. Getting train tickets to Ukraine from Poland was not easy because all tickets are sold out weeks in advance due to Ukrainian families flocking back home in droves. If you want to make this journey, it's best to purchase your train tickets first and then plan your flights around your already booked train tickets. Also, be sure to get food and groceries at the Warsaw train station as not all trains offer food. Since the train ride from Warsaw to Kyiv is 17 hours long, we opted for the private sleeper car. They weren't too bad, sort of like a Manhattan studio apartment that travels. Once we got to the Ukrainian border, passport control went door to door stamping our passports and making sure we weren't Russian spies. After a bit of a night's sleep, I went in to check on Diana and Sofia. Oh, hello. Come oh, on. Hello. I mean, how was this trip different than the previous ones? It's a lot longer. I'm not going to ever complain about the other trip again. <laughs> so how long have we been on this train so far? Like 16 hours, I think. Yeah. It's been a long uh, 16 hours so far. And, um, but, you know, I appreciate the fact that we can even come, to be totally honest. So it's like this balance of this is really long and it's really hard. And then yet this appreciation of the fact that we're even able to come is I'm beyond grateful because at one point I wasn't sure earlier this year we were going to be able to do this or not. So I, you know, hard to complain about what I'm grateful for at the same time as this is brutally long. Um, and I, I look forward to when we can come back in peacefully through our normal means of, you know, flying into Kiev. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually really grateful to be here. I Finally. so much am enjoying this countryside though. It's absolutely it is. it's breathtaking to me. I love this. Especially when the sun was setting and the oh. trees were like golden. It's so beautiful. It was a beautiful sense of it. Yeah. It really was. And honestly, the appreciation of just honest just my heart felt like being here and and just what these people have gone through this last year. I mean, I was sick to my stomach when this whole thing broke out, obviously, because I'm connected. And just to be here is like this almost, I don't know how, how you describe it, but it's almost like such a respect for what they've had to go through. And the fact that we even get to come here and that they're fighting for their own lives and that, you know, we're also fighting for our lives in some ways, but um, to God, it's just this appreciation that I have is even renewed. I already loved it before, but this is a whole nother level. So much love and respect for these people, 100%. Yeah. Hey there, I was hoping this was the right room. Yes, <laughs> that's it's a good, the right that's room. That's a good guess. <laughs> I then went to check on Zinzella and Adonis. I want to ask you first, Adonis, what do you feel about all of this, you've experienced this journey? Uh, it, it's, it's cool. Yeah? You've enjoyed it? Yeah. Yeah? Have you ever been on a train ride like this before? No. no. We were here last November and we were able to just fly in to the airport in Kyiv and get picked up and 
this trip is totally different. We flew into Poland. We stayed a night there at the um, airport hotel. Then we're on this train and it's a new experience for me and Adonis. Um, I've never been on a train like this before. So it's a cool little adventure, yeah. I, I didn't think we would ever be able to come back, obviously. Um, I was glad to hear that the lab did open and that people were able to go. And I'm just glad that we're able to join you guys on this trip. Yeah, I, I, I really didn't think we would go back ever. So I'm glad we all got to meet up. I'm really enjoying the company and it's it's been nice. Honestly, yeah. When we arrived at the Kiev train station, our drivers were already waiting for us. We stayed at the Favor Park Hotel, just a five minute drive from the clinic. You took him forever. While in Kiev, my wife and I both received M cells anti aging fetal stem cell protocol. For an extensive explanation of what this therapy entails, be sure to watch Ukraine Fetal Stem Cell Pioneers coming in April of 2023. Go to stemcellsmovie.com forward slash contribute for a written and visual summary of this therapy, or click on the link in the description below to see a 37 minute preview of this new documentary right now. 14 year old Sophia has been receiving fetal stem cell therapy annually for muscular dystrophy since she was four years old. Thanks to fetal stem cells, she's essentially a one of a kind as all other children with her diagnosis at her age, if alive, are in a wheelchair, on a feeding tube, and a respirator. Her mother Diana has also been regularly receiving fetal stem cell therapy alongside her daughter. So we'd like to know what is uh, the biggest changes since the previous treatment you've been here. Um, walking's been a lot easier. Like I've been able to walk longer distances. Like four, Four miles? I don't, yeah, four miles. Four miles, like four miles. Okay, good. Any other changes except this one? Um, not that I can think of. She's gained weight. Uh -huh. That's good. <laughs> to see Sophia's entire 10 year journey, watch the 37 minute preview of Ukraine Fetal Stem Cell Pioneers linked in the description below. 10 year old Adonis also has muscular dystrophy. This trip was his second time receiving therapy. After he received the treatment, he told me that he was sleeping better and he, he wasn't waking up in the middle of the night for air. So now he's sleeping all the night long, yes. right? Yes. Okay. And no breathing no problems. No breathing problems, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Maybe something else. Yes. Notice. Yes, and um, he's able to walk longer distances. Uh -huh. Something else, maybe? Yes, and then he also his hand strength improved, mm -hmm. and he's able to lift heavier weights mm -hmm. now. Is there something you would like to add? Um, no, just okay. We've uh, seen major improvements, so yeah, that's uh, what I'm we checked in on Julie, who was on the same train with us and has been receiving fetal stem cell therapy to help in her recovery from Lyme disease. Julie's chronic Lyme disease had been systematically causing damage to her joints, organs, brain, and spine. How does it feel to be back? It feels so good to be back. I'm so happy and grateful that we were able to come, um, especially with everything going on. Uh, but once we got here, it feels very safe and um, it feels very normal. How does it feel being in Kiev? It feels good. It's busy, it's crowded, people seem happy. Uh, I know that there's a lot of trouble and that they've been through a lot, but they're very strong people. Also joining us at MCEL was another American named Lee, who headed to MCEL for her fourth time. But Lee took a train from Krakow instead of Warsaw. Hi, Eric. Hey, Lee. It's so nice to see you. Oh my God, it is. <laughs> this is my fourth time at MCEL. I love it here. Um, this time was different, though, because there's a war going on. So instead of flying into uh, Kiev, Ukraine, I had to fly into Poland and then take a very long train ride here. And um, I was originally going to go with Eric's group. And then I canceled 
But then last minute I was like, you know what? I really want to do it. It's crazy not to go. I should go. But then I came by myself and a lot of the train tickets were sold out. So I had to switch trains at the border of Poland and Ukraine. And uh, that was a bit of an adventure. But you know what? Everybody here is so nice in Poland and in Ukraine. All the kids under 25 can speak English well enough to help you. And everybody is so kind. So really, it's no big deal. Um, it was sort of a fun adventure. I actually really enjoyed it. The number one prescription in America is thyroid medication. And guess what you don't need to take if you get fetal stem cells? You don't need to take your thyroid medication. At least I don't. I don't need to take a million different medications um, that I would normally have needed to take. So um, it's, it's incredible. And I also think there's no better testimonial for it than I entered a war zone to get the treatment. My other thing, the other reason why I really came here is that it helps sort of break the floodgates of letting this amazing healing treatment through. And, you know, when you see the movie with um, Sophia, you know, at the muscular dystrophy camp with all the kids in the wheelchairs, I mean, doesn't that just like break your heart? I wish you would tell me why. Do you want to build a snowman? This is Sophia at Muscular Dystrophy Camp at age six, after receiving two annual fetal stem cell therapies in 2012 and 2013. The girl in the wheelchair to the right is eight years old and has Sophia's exact same diagnosis. There are people suffering and this treatment can help that. So just even showing this movie to a friend can make a difference. So help break the floodgates. I don't think, I don't think it takes that much to do it. So that was the main reason why I came to be part of that movement of having a more loving, healing medical system for the world, because this is what the cellular medicine is a loving, healing medicine for everybody. It's, it's there. It's there for everyone. I have been following Lee for several years. For more on her story, see the link in the description below. Finally, the ninth American in our group was Dean, who booked super last minute and had to take a bus from Warsaw to Kiev, since all trains were sold out. This was my first time meeting Dean in person. Speaking to the Ukrainian people that run the clinic before I got here, I felt connected with them because they're so sweet and just real, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and then getting here and, and realizing like what Russia is doing to these people and dehumanizing them and writing them out of their textbooks in Russia, writing Ukraine out of textbooks. It's so disgusting and it's very, it's super sad and to see that actually. That these are people, this is a civilization here, this is a very civilized society. The people are really such special people. They have a great culture, great food, great treatment in this amazing center like that you can't get anywhere else in the world. I couldn't be happier. Um, I'm getting stuff that I wouldn't have gotten in the United States and fast and not expensive. I feel like, you know, this is like, there's no hospitals in New York like this that you would get this kind of treatment or they would never do this treatment in the United States. So I feel privileged to have gotten here and it was worth the trek, even with the danger element, I'm still happy that I, I made it and I would do it again. And I might even stay a few, a few extra days to enjoy the city. At the end of our stay, we celebrated our epic trip with an epic dinner at a fine Georgian restaurant one block from our hotel. The next day, we headed back to Poland. My wife and I decided to catch a train to Krakow instead of Warsaw because, well, Krakow is a magnificent city. If you are ever in Krakow, be sure to dine at the world-famous Wyszynek restaurant and ask the waiter for a tour, as Wyszynek is the oldest restaurant in all of Poland. Schools, hospitals, universities. Part of our territory totally occupied by Russians and really huge part. Bulgaria. But right now we don't see a lot of news about Ukraine because unfortunately everybody started to forget about it. Sam 
If you have not yet seen it, be sure to watch the 37-minute preview of Ukraine Fetal Stem Cell Pioneers by clicking in the link in the description below. If you visit stemcellsmovie.com forward slash contribute, you can read an extensive summary about this new documentary, watch other exclusive videos related to it, and also learn how you can contribute to this new project's release with a 501c3 tax-deductible donation. If you have any questions whatsoever, please email me. Almost no one knows about this therapy. I'm always excited when I get an email asking me about my work following fetal stem cells in Kyiv, Ukraine, the only place on earth where this technology is legal and regulated, with MCEL being the only organization on Earth offering it. I have scoured the planet for eight years seeking anyone else doing what MCEL is doing. It doesn't exist. And somehow, I continue to be the only journalist on Earth covering this technology. Feel free to sign up to my mailing list for overall updates on my work following fetal stem cell therapy and its ever-expanding technology. And don't miss Ukraine Fetal Stem Cell Pioneers coming to this YouTube channel in April of 2023.